Hey, welcome to the Electron X Lab. In a previous video, I used mesh current analysis on this circuit to set up this system of linear equations, with the currents being the unknowns. In a subsequent video, I then showed you a few ways to solve these equations. Uh, manually, using Kramer's rule, with a calculator, in equation solving mode, and in matrix mode, with Excel, with MATLAB, and with online matrix tools. In one of those videos, someone commented that I could also solve the equation with GNU Octave which was designed to operate a lot like MATLAB and has the added bonus of being free and open source software. So this made me wonder what other free and open source MATLAB alternatives there are. And it turns out there are a lot. The website alternative2.net lists over 50 alternatives. Amongst the alternatives are Julia, GNU Octave, Scilab, and NumPy, which is Python's library for arrays and matrices. And I'm going to take a quick look at each of these free and open source tools to see how easy it is to solve this system of linear equations with them. So first up is Julia, which was really easy to install. Just download from the website, which is in the show notes, and install it. On startup, I think it's provided a really clean interface, and I can just create a matrix variable, A, like I did with MATLAB. Use square brackets, and then each new row is separated by a semicolon. And similarly, I can make matrix B in the same way. I can also easily create the inverse of A with the A caret to the minus 1, and finally calculate the X vector, vector for the currents that I'm trying to figure out, by multiplying the inverse of A by B, and that gives me X. And what you're watching here is not my first time trying this, but this is exactly what I did the first time. I assumed that the functionality would be like MATLAB and just went for it without even reading any documentation. So overall, I'd say Julia is easy to install, intuitive to use, and at least for this simple application here, um, a go-to, I would say. You'll notice in the answer there's a lot of decimal points, which is fine, but I'm sure there's a way to give a limited number if that's what you wanted. Next up is Octave, which is supposed to be the one that is most like MATLAB. And you can see that there are a lot more windows that pop up here than in Julia. In fact, it, it really looks a lot like the MATLAB interface. And you can see in the bottom left there, you can even see my command history to give away the fact that I've gone through this already. And so just like with Julia, I assumed that the commands would be the same as MATLAB and just started to enter the A matrix, then the B matrix. Then I calculated the inverse of A and finally multiplied that by B. And it all just worked the way that I expected it to. The commands were all identical to MATLAB and to Julia. The only difference was that I didn't get as many decimal points in my answer, but I'm sure that that's configurable if I wanted more or less. So far, for the first two applications, you'll get basically the same results by entering the exact same commands. And the advantage that you have with both of these over MATLAB is both of these are free software. Not only free, but also open source. I'd say that I have a slight preference for Julia since that window is so much cleaner. Scilab is next, and once again, the commands are the exact same. Enter matrix A. Enter matrix B. Calculate the inverse of A, and then calculate X to give you the values for your current. I think the interface is cleaner here than Octave, but somehow more boring than Julia. That's just my first impression, though. I haven't looked into how you would go about configuring the interface in any way. Maybe you can do that for all three of these to give you exactly what you want. But that wasn't really my purpose here. Finally, NumPy. Now this application was the most confusing to install. It was also the trickiest to use and the least like MATLAB. Ultimately, it did end up working, but I had to make extensive use of the NumPy help to figure it out. First of all, NumPy is a package within Python. So you need a Python installation first. And there are so many to choose from. The NumPy page suggests that you use Anaconda, so that's what I went with. And the Anaconda install installs everything that you need, but also so much more. So, so, so much more. And after installation, it wasn't clear what I needed to do to get to an interface where I could actually start to enter matrices to solve these linear equations. So by reading the NumPy help, I realized that I needed to bring up the Anaconda navigator, and that seemed to have a number of different possible interfaces to use. By reading through the different descriptions, it looked like Spider was going to be the best fit because that one had a console that I could use. Now there's a few things within the Spider interface. There's a 
file interface and then there's a console interface and it was really the console interface that I want. Now, start off with, um, I tried to enter the matrix just the same way that I would with MATLAB. That clearly didn't work. Then I looked up the way that you use the NumPy to create an, an array. So I did that. But of course I haven't installed or I haven't imported NumPy yet. So I'm gonna import NumPy as NP so I can use the NP abbreviation to access everything. And then I could create the A array followed by the B array Oh, that was just a mistake. I didn't, I meant to type uppercase A. There's my two arrays. And now I can take the inverse of A. And again, the NumPy help, help me figure out how to get the inverse of A. And you can see it there. And then I tried to multiply the inverse of A by B to get my X value. And I did get an X value, but that is clearly not it. It's a three by three matrix. And while the numbers are close, they're not quite right. They've got negative signs in front of them. After a little bit more investigation, I learned that I needed to use the dot function to do the dot product, I guess, and was able to calculate X. And you can see there the values for X, which correspond to the correct values for the three currents that I'm looking for. So if you only need a tool to solve linear equations, NumPy is overkill and more complicated than you need. If you're already familiar with Python and have it installed, or you want to do a lot of other numerical processing using matrices and arrays, then NumPy is a good choice. Otherwise, I'd use one of the other three applications that I've showed you here. I currently don't have a strong preference for any of them, but I'm leaning a little bit towards Julia, just based solely on its clean and attractive interface. I may change my mind in the future because it's not even much of an exaggeration to say that most of my experience with these programs is captured here in this video. I've literally only used each one for a handful of minutes at the most. I'd love to hear from you which of these applications you prefer to use to solve your systems of linear equations, or if you have an alternative that you like to use. So let me know in the comments. And once again, I really appreciate you watching my videos. See you next time.